let's have a look at Wednesday the 8th of November 2017 papers solutions. <clears throat> this is a calculator paper. So let's have a look at some of the questions in this paper and how to answer them. Okay, so the first question here gives you information about heights of 80 children and it asks you to work out the interval that has the the median in it. <clears throat> okay, so median obviously means a middle number, doesn't it? So the middle number, which we are finding out, uh, obviously we need to work out how many people there are all together, which is 80. So if I do 80 here, divided by two, that's 40. I want the 40th person. So I've got four people here. Another 11 makes it 15. Another 24 makes it 39. Another 22 makes it 61. And another 19 makes it 80. Right, so the 40th person is obviously going to be in this interval because we've only got 39 people here. That's two less. I want 40. So obviously the 40th person is going to be here because it's obviously all the people from 41 to 61. Um, and that interval there is 160. And 170. Okay. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Let's have a look at the other question then, shall we? Draw a frequency polygon. Well, a frequency polygon then um, obviously is um, a like a straight line graph, you could say, but you have to remember that you have to plot the midpoint against the frequency. So let's look at the midpoint. So I'm just going to write it down. In between 130 and 140 is 135, then 145, then 165, then 165, oh, 155, sorry. Uh, let's get the rubber. 155, 165, and 175. Okay, so we need to plot 135 against 4. Let's just zoom out a little bit. 135 against 4. Uh, 145 against 11. Um, 155 against 24. 165 against 22. And then 175 against 19. Okay, and then you need to make sure that you have a really nice straight ruler. Obviously, I don't have one here, but it should look like this. And never join your point to zero, because um, that would be incorrect, but that's how you draw a frequency polygon. Okay, let's now have a look at the next question in this paper. The first question was pretty simple and straightforward. Um, didn't really need that much of a... Um, you know, intense working out. Right. Question two. We're three marks and it's to do with conversion rates. So you've got London. You've got one litre of petrol costs 108.9 pence. In New York, one US gallon of petrol costs 2.83. Gives you the conversion rate and it says, which city is petrol better value for money? London or New York? Right. Wow. So we've got a lot to do there, haven't we? So I'm going to do this. Well, I'm just going to write down what I need to know first. I'm going to write down one litre equals 108.9 pence. OK. Right. So I'm going to highlight that bit and I'm going to highlight that bit because they're the most important things. OK. Well, let's have a look then. It tells me that one pound is equal to one point four six dollars. Right, I'm just going to convert that into pence because this here is in pence. So I'm just going to say a hundred pence is equal to one pound forty six dollars. Yeah, just so I've, you know, I'm not got any decimals in there. Well, I know that one liter is equal to one hundred eight point nine pence. So one hundred eight point nine pence is going to equal how many dollars? Well, I need to check how do I get from 100 to 108.9. Well, I need to do 108.9 divided by 100, and that'll tell me that I have to times by 1.089. So I do the same on this time, size of 1.089, and I end up with, in dollars, 1.58994. Okay, and that's that. 
Right, so let's have a look then. That tells me obviously one litre, doesn't it? Because look, it tells me one litre costs that. Okay, so obviously one litre would cost one pound one point five eight or one point five nine. Then the next thing I'm going to do is one US gallon. Okay, is three point seven eight five litres. Well, I'm just going to look at one litre. Okay, <clears throat> obviously I'm going to do one divided by three point seven eight five. And that gives me 0 0.2642 gallons. Okay, right, let's have a look. London here, I've already worked out at the top, which is, um, I'm going to do it in dollars. It's one pound, 1.59. I'm just going to do New York now because I know what one litre is. I know that one litre equals 0 0.2642 gallons. So one gallon equals 2.83 well 0 0.2642 gallons in money would be 0 0.747687 so what's cheaper from them too is new york isn't it so i'm going to write new york is cheaper okay right <clears throat> question three You've got gold bar, it says mass, it says density is volume. First thing I'm going to do is draw my triangle, MDV, because I know I'm going to need mass, density, volume. I have to work out the volume. Well, to get the volume, I've got to do density divided by mass. It tells me the density, doesn't it? Oh, actually, saying that before I go any further, realised that the M goes at the top. MDV. So ma volume is mass divided by density. Tells me the mass. Yes, it does. 12.5. Tells me the density. 19.3. Right. That is not 0.64766839388. When I tap that into my calculator. Um, okay. And that's not that. It says <coughs> I have to give the volume. Now that is obviously, um, I've worked out the volume. Now I've got to times it by a thousand. Uh, and I get 647.668. Actually, the answer has to be to three significant figures. So 648. Always really good to make sure um, that you draw your triangle. Obviously, also make sure that you convert at the end. I've had to times by a thousand because look, it says 12.5 kilograms and the density is 9.3 grams per centimeters cubes. Uh, and I know that one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. That's why I times by a thousand to convert it at the end. Um, because obviously this here is in kilograms and this here is in grams, which is a problem. Okay, so I've times it by... Um, if you have a look, one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. And obviously I've times it by a thousand to work out what it would be in grams. So make sure you obviously times your units as well according to whatever you need to times them by. Okay, so next one. There are only blue pens, green pens, red pens in a box. The ratio of the number of blue pens to the number of green pens is two to three, right? Blue to green is two to five. The ratio of number of green pens to the number of red pens is four to one. Okay, so there are less than 100 pens in the box and I have to work at the greatest number of red pens. And we've got blue, green, red. Okay, so we need to make sure that the greens are the same. Yeah, because I've got the green here as five and the green here as four. So we need to find the lowest common multiple, which is 20. So if I times this one by four, I get eight to 20 times this one by five I get 20 to five now blue to green to red I can bring them together blue is eight green is 20 and red is five okay so add these up and I end up with 33 parts so I've got 33 there all together now I've got five out of 33 and I'm going to times it by 100 okay 
And if I do that on my calculator, I get 15.1515. And obviously it's less than, so I'm going to round down. It's 15 pence. Okay, so the next thing here um, is reciprocal. Pretty simple and straightforward. To work out reciprocal, it's just one over the number. So one over 1.6. The type of my calculator is not 0.625. Okay. Jess rounds a number x, or we have to write down the area interval. So that just means basically what can the smallest number be and what can the largest number be. Obviously, to get 9.8, the smallest number has to be 9.75, and the largest number has to be 9.85. And then, obviously, you put in less than and greater than signs in there. And actually, just to double check here, I can't put the, great, the equal to sign, because if your number is equal to 9.85, then it's going to have to round up, isn't it? But obviously, if your number is less than 9.85, it will still round to 9.8, because 9.85 obviously rounds up to 9.9. .9. OK, <clears throat> let's have a look at the next question. Here, it is worth five marks, a lot of marks. We've got a rectangle. The length of the rectangle is seven centimetres longer than the width. So I'm going to say that's x, and that's x plus seven. Four of these are used to make this eight-sided shape. It tells you the perimeter, and they have to work out the area. So I'm going to start by labeling the sides. That's x, x plus eight, x, x plus eight, x, x plus eight, x, and that is x plus eight. Um, just these two here left. Well, if that's x, and it has to be x plus eight, that has to be seven. Oh, it's x plus 7, isn't it? Not x plus 8. <laughs> okay, x plus 7. I was thinking of an, um, the eight-sided shape. Right. And that would also be 7 then, because that little bit there would be x, and the whole of it has to be x plus 7. So obviously x at 7 is x plus 7. Right. We know the perimeter. The perimeter is 70, so we need to add everything up. We've got x, add x plus 7, add x, add um, 7, add x, add 7, add x, add x, add 7, add x, add 7, add x, add 7. Right. Add everything together. Um, let me get all the x's up. Okay, I think I've got 8x plus 42 as a perimeter, which is going to equal 70. Okay, so let's solve this now. 8x equals 28. Divide by 8, x equals 3.5. So x is equal to 3.5. And I have to work on the area of the eight-sided shape, don't I? So... <clears throat> If x is 8, let's look at the length. Because remember, that's 8 now, and that has to be x add 7. So 3.5 add 7, which is 10.5. Right, let's look at the area of one rectangle. 8 times 10.5 is 36.75. How many rectangles have we got? Four of them. So if I times that by 4 on my calculator, I end up with 147. And that's my answer. Simple and straightforward. Okay, question seven. Right. So, oh, we have to write this as an ordinary number. Great that we've got a calculator. Absolutely fantastic. I'm going to times the numbers together. 13.8 and 5.4 on my calculator. And I end up with 74.52. Absolutely great and perfect. Times 10. Now, obviously... When the times by 10 and it's a time sign, I've got to add the powers. Well, 7 add minus 12 is actually minus 5. That's not um, an ordinary number and it's not asking for it in standard form. Okay. That just means that, let's get rid of that. Let's write it out again without it making that. 
74.5. See, that means I've got to move 5 backwards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Dot there, 0, 0, 0, 0. And it's not point not 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 seven four five two. And there you are. Any other questions on this page? No. Right. Question number eight then. Got a lot of information here. It says when drawing when a drawing pin is dropped, it can land point down or point up. Lucy, Mel, and Tom each drop the drawing pin a number of times. The table shows the number of times the drawing pin landed point down and the number of times the drawing pin landed point up for each person. Rachel is going to drop the drawing pin once. Whose results will give the best estimate for the probability that the drawing pin will land point up? Um, give a reason, right? I'm just going to calculate this up. So loose point down is 31 and 53 of 16. That's 100. And the bottom one is 50. Right, let's have a look. The drawing pin will land point up. Okay, I'm going to say it is Mel because she has the greatest number of throws. Yeah, so the more time somebody does something, it's more reliable the information than somebody who doesn't do it. Obviously, if you're doing constructing an experiment and somebody's done it 100 times compared to somebody who's only you know done the experiment 10 times you're going to believe the person who's done it 100 times because obviously you would expect their results to be more reliable don't you right Stuart is going to drop the drawing pin twice use all the results in the table to work out an estimate for the probability that the drawing pin will land point up the first time and then point down the second time well let's add everything up to see it's 150, which is 150 times altogether. First time is uh, land point up first time. Well, point up first time is 50 out of 150. And then point down the second time is 100 out of 150. Times them and I get 5,000 over 22,500. Obviously, that looks a bit ridiculous, doesn't it? We can simplify that. Does it for me on my calculators? And I get two ninth. Quite simple and straightforward. Okay, thank you for watching. We'll be back with an, in another video to go through the rest of the paper.